Saint Teresa of Avila was one of the greatest saints in the history of the church. She was a mystic, she was a reformer, and she is a doctor of the church. But despite all of this, she very nearly went to hell. In fact, if it wasn't for a certain fact what took place in her life, she would have gone to hell as our Lord Jesus Christ himself revealed to her. However, as incredible as it may seem, this was not because of some horrible crime that she committed. What was it that nearly sent her to hell? And how can we avoid the same mistake? Let me explain. Teresa was a very virtuous girl right from her childhood. In fact, she desired so much to serve God and to be in heaven with Him that as a child she ran away from home with her little brother in search of a martyr's death. She wanted to be a martyr to go to heaven as soon as possible. Of course, this dream of hers did not come true because of an uncle who caught the two young children at the outskirts of the city and brought them back home. Now, one can well imagine the concern of the family when Teresa said that she was trying to find her death at the hands of the infidels. Her mother told her that this was not what God wanted of her. God wanted her to serve Him, to love Him, and to be with Him in heaven, not by dying a martyr's death, but by being a virtuous girl here on earth. She accepted her mother's advice and to tried her best to be even more virtuous than before. Teresa said her prayers well and was very generous, always trying to help others to love God. After she joined the Carmelites, she was an exemplary nun. Everyone liked her and confided in her to the point that still a novice, she was given the chance to work in the convent infirmary to help taking care of the six sisters. Now, this was a very responsible position and it was something very difficult to do because, as one can imagine, it is not always easy to take care of old people with all sorts of illnesses. Much more in those days when they did not have all the modern medical techniques that we have today. Because of this, the novices were never given this responsibility. It alone was reserved for the professed sisters. But St. Teresa was so virtuous and so responsible that as a novice she received this task. At a certain moment of her life, she herself fell sick and her illness was so serious that everyone was certain that she was going to die. Now her father went to the convent and with the permission of her superiors, took her to different parts of Spain, to different doctors to see if anyone could cure her but her health went from bad to worse. Yet, in the middle of all this, she continued on the path of virtue with an intense spiritual life, saying her prayers, doing her daily meditation, and so forth. Finally, our Lord Jesus Christ cured her to the great joy of all the sisters and town people of Avila. But, that's when things started getting complicated. Because now St. Teresa was so popular in the city and in the convent that at every hour people desired to talk to her, to share the joy of her having been cured, and to benefit from her company. St. Teresa took advantage of these occasions to talk to the people about God to help them. To be honest, she probably did a lot of good to the people who visited her. But something very bad happened in the midst of all this. She had to receive so many visits that she started putting her own prayer life aside. She stopped spending time in prayer and meditation. This was something very bad that she was doing. In fact, there were a number of people among others, her own father, who had taken up daily meditation and serious prayer life because of her advice. And now, she herself had stopped. Of course, she had all sorts of excuses for this. One day, she told herself, 
that the older nuns in the convent also spend the whole day in the parlor chatting with visitors and not praying very much, nor meditating. So, if they could do it, why not her? On, on other days, she told herself that the people who came to visit her received so many graces that it was a good thing. Nevertheless, these were just excuses, and God was not pleased with her. Over time, she started decaying more and more in her spiritual life. Our Lord Jesus Christ warned her several times about her decadence. For example, one day as she was talking to someone, she suddenly saw a horrible toad-like creature creeping towards her. On another occasion, she saw Jesus Christ gazing at her with a very sad gaze because of her decadence. In spite of all this, she continued along that same path for 16 long years. Now you might ask, what converted her? What made her the great Saint Teresa that we know of today? One day, her father fell sick and was at death's doorstep. With the permission of her superiors, she went to his house to help him on his deathbed. Now, the priest who was ministering to him at this moment was a very virtuous and devout Dominican. She was so impressed by this priest's virtue that she asked him to hear her confession. And to him, she opened her soul. The priest was not just virtuous, but also very well formed in theology. And he immediately diagnosed the disease of her soul. He realized that everything that was going wrong with her spiritual life was because she had given up that intense prayer life that she had in the past. And he asked her to return to that intense prayer life. Of course, we can be sure that this caused her much difficulty in the beginning. Because prayer is like this. Here on earth, the more we drink, the less thirst we feel. But in relation to the spiritual world, the more we pray, the more we desire to pray. And the less we pray, the less we feel the need of prayer. One can well imagine how much of a struggle it must have been for St. Teresa after all these years, 16 to be exact, to go back to an intense spiritual life. But she did not give up. And because of that, she became the great Saint Teresa through whom God has touched millions of souls. Now, let us imagine something. What if Saint Teresa had not gone back to her intense spiritual life? Well, our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to her once and showed her the place in hell that was reserved for her, had she not converted. However, as far as we know, she was not committing any mortal sins. She only had venial sins. And we know that venial sins cannot condemn us to hell. But that is exactly the point. If she had not given up her trivial lifestyle, if she had not taken her prayer life seriously, over time, her venial sins would have led her to commit mortal sins. Then she would have lost her soul. This happens and can happen to each and every one of us. I would like to believe that all of you who are watching this video take your prayer life very seriously. But even if we do, there is always the danger of us becoming lax. If somebody as virtuous and holy as St. Teresa would have condemned herself because of a lack of a solid spiritual life, what will happen to us who are miserable sinners? That is something for us to think about. Of course, our spiritual life shouldn't be based on just feelings. When I feel like praying, I pray. And when I don't feel like it, I don't. That is the wrong attitude. There is something else which is much more important that I must follow in my spiritual life. And this, St. Teresa also had to learn. In fact, she 
would never have done all that she did if she just depended on her feelings. Above all, she would not have been the great Saint Teresa if she had not resisted her sentiments when God himself wanted her to insult Jesus. What? Did I hear that right? Yes, yes you did. I am not joking. There came a moment in Saint Teresa's life where she had to actually insult the God-man. But that is another story. And if you come back next week, I promise to tell you this mysterious episode of Saint Teresa's life and the lessons it has for us. Until then, let us remember to pray for each other and to ask for Saint Teresa's intercession. Salve Maria.